Hello, Fanime, and welcome to Make Anime Great Again, a retrospective on trends in anime quality, where, honestly, we just boomer your ass for an hour. Uh, my name's Max. I love you. I'm Andrew. And I'm Clayton, and I'm unironically on team. It is the children who are wrong, so buckle <laughs> up. <laughs> and together, we're the foundation for the preservation of Gen 1 Pokemon. You can follow us on Twitter at 5th Gen, not PKMN. You cannot follow us on Blue Sky because we were not cool enough to get a Blue Sky invite. So, and I, I'd ask any of you, but let's be honest, none of you were cool enough either. <laughs> it, it's like Twitter 7, like at this point. There's Mastodon and then there's, I don't, I don't know, they're all fake. Anyway, Clayton, what do you know about anime? Well, according to the Wikipedia article for anime, the first anime was Astro Boy by Osama Tezuka. But Wiki according to Encyclopedia Britannica, I shouldn't trust Wikipedia, so I'm going to shut up right now. Yeah, you fucking should. Uh, Astro Boy wasn't the first anime. When, when we talk about the history of anime, we have to go back to where it originated from, which is not Japan. It's America. I know. We're going to lay this out for you, okay? You need to get it together. <laughs> yeah. I'm bad at microphones. So, uh, when people, you know, go, oh, Osama Tetsuka, creator, creator of Astro Boy, created the first anime. Like, sure, I guess that's kind of true, but he credits his creative inspiration to be Carl Barks, the creator of DuckTales. Which means that uh, this is a real uh, Christmas card from Osama Tetsuka to Carl Barks. Uh, his estate still sends them to Carl Barks, you know, for uh, holidays, birthdays, random Thursdays of the week, kind of whatever. He just really fucking loves the dude. And Carl Barks' estate has a burn on site order for all of these fucking cards. So, you might be saying, Max, DuckTales was a comic, not an anime. Okay, fine. If we're going to go for the first serialized animated series, it's still not Astro Boy, it's Crusader Rabbit. Which some of you think that's a joke, <laughs> but this is actually Wikipedia. Also, uh, Crusader Rabbit, shockingly, inspired by the Crusades. <laughs> and little known fact about the Crusades, the first emperor of Byzantium was Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> Therefore, the, uh, the Holy Roman Empire, anime. Crusades, anime. Crusader Rabbit, anime. Astro Boy, I don't know, some weird ass fan fiction. And, like, this is so well known in Japan. Have you ever wondered why Super Saiyan hair is golden yellow? It's to pay homage to, it's to, pay homage to Scrooge McDuck's vast wealth. So having gone over DuckTales already, I think it's time to touch on what this illustrious series has in common with other properties from the same time period, such as Gigantor which was one of the first mecha anime, was very popular in Latin America, and most importantly for our purposes, like the hit American anime DuckTales, it was dubbed in English. And contrary to what is perhaps the popular belief in this room, this is a good thing because English is by far the best language to for anime to be voiced in. Um, first of all, this Hit language learning software is pre-installed on every license of Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, and Arc Linux. Not Ubuntu though, they're too normy, so we're not gonna give it to them. But the point is, everyone already speaks English, so if you dub it into English, you already have maximized your potential audience, so there's not really much else left to do. But it goes deeper than that. If we uh, transition to a linguistics lesson here, here we have the family tree of all of the Proto-Indo-European languages, or all the languages growing out of Proto-Indo-European, I should say. And if you look long and hard and develop better eyesight so you can actually read this slide, you'll find that right here is English nestled in next to Frisian and Dutch along with the other West Germanic languages. Cousins with German, not quite brothers. The grammar is very similar. So wait, you're saying that you could fuck one of them if it were an anime? <laughs> We're not Kansas, bud. <laughs> yeah, I believe this is California, where actually cousin marriage is legal. So yeah, yeah, mind. first cousin is legal in California, just <laughs> as a 
as a heads up. Anyway, um, but despite English being locatable on this tree, no matter how hard you try, you cannot find Japanese because it is not an Indo-European language, which takes us to the geography lesson. If we look at this map of the world, which depicts all countries which primarily speak an Indo-European language in green and all other countries in blue, we can see that there are no blue countries. <laughs> Therefore, we can conclude that nobody speaks Japanese, <laughs> not a single person on this entire green earth. And therefore, why would you dub into Japanese? You gain no potential new audience. It's a lot of work. Anglophones have to read. It's like the holy trifecta of suck. Let's not go with that. And let's instead, you know, delve deeper and see that one anime in particular of divine that is the 90s adaptation of the Ramayana, which was a co-production between the Indian government and, an, and a Japanese anime studio, which up front said the whole point of this was to, you know, bring relations between Japan and India closer together you know, at, at the end of the Cold War. But really, it was just to make Hinduism hip for millennials. I mean, I don't know. I watched it in college and it was a bad. Um, but the thing, other than the Ramayana hat being full of, you know, action and romance and daring, uh, it is also an anime that was originally dubbed in English with a few songs dubbed into Hindi. Um, later received a full Hindi dub, but it still to this day only has Japanese subtitles. It has never been dubbed into Japanese, which means we can conclude that English is therefore the divinely sanctioned correct language for anime according to Vishnu the Preserver and don't even at me on this or my boy Hanuman is going to drop a goddamn mountain on your face so shut up. <laughs> so now that we've done it with the fact that Japan has just you know fucking stolen anime from America. <laughs> is this your favorite slide? Okay. Weird pick but I'll take it. Uh, I think this means that, you know, we have to take the anime back. And if there's one thing America's good at, it's forcing Japan to trade with us. <laughs> well, hell, we'll even send Matthew Perry. Wait, the real Matthew Perry. <laughs> and it's the 1990s. We don't need to sail over the ocean. We can invade Japan the proper way through space. And of course, Toonami brought a lot of us anime in the 90s. That's why I'm an anime, and that therefore means all of you are anime, anime for the same reason. But they couldn't just import it as is, they had to Americanize it, make it okay for American audiences. So the first thing they did was they took those lollipops in one piece and replaced them with cigarettes. Because, you know, cigarettes are that cool thing your very cool uncle has. You like him. He gives you, like, 20 bucks to stay quiet. Um, where, like, lollipops are that thing the dentist gives you to just to get more cavities. So, yeah, very clearly superior. Um, and then they removed all references to hell because, I mean, it's very Christian. Japan has a weird fascination with Christianity. America obviously doesn't, so we have to rename it. So they named it the Shadow Realm. And then, of course, in the dub of E.T. that they imported from Japan, um, they took and removed all of the guns and replaced them with radios because clearly American kids aren't allowed to learn about guns through anime. They need to learn about it in school. <laughs> but overall, anime had a huge impact in the 90s. It really changed the face of the world. So we're going to go through some of the best anime from the 90s and really how they changed the world. First, of course, being Cowboy Bebop. It was a fantastic anime, really well-rounded, very interesting, sci-fi, very realistic. Um, but the CIA saw this in the, in the 90s was like, whoa, this is great. Look at how realistic this animation is. Um, if we want to fake a moon landing, we just hire some Japanese animators. When we don't have to go to the moon or get some fancy studio. We just pay them like pizza for a weekend and bam, we can make the Russians look bad. Um, I mean, look at these two images. They are identical. There are no differences between these images. Uh, the next transformative 90s anime was, of course, uh, My Bay and Yours, The Blade. Now, most of you think Beyblade is some dumb battle top simulator, and those of you who do are fucking wrong. Uh, as we all know, after Moses told the Pharaoh to let his people go, he then declared that he would let it fucking rip all over the Red Sea. <laughs> 
Because Beyblades, much like Transformers and Michael Bay lore, have been around with us since the beginning of time. Hell, did you know John Hancock? Beyblade. <laughs> you ever wonder why Roman coliseums are round? It's not to give the lions a better exercise when they hunt down those delicious Christians. Nah, man. Giant fucking Beyblades. And there's so many other transformative 90s anime that we could discuss, but Frankly, we don't, no one has time for that. They wouldn't give us 12 hours. We had to cut the panel down. So we'll just kind of have to skim over, you know, Zoid's Chaotic Century, Zoid's New Century, Zoid's Trigun Century, <laughs> the blatant Sesame Street ripoff, Zoid's Pokemon Century. Thank you for reading. <laughs> and the most gruesome of them all, Zoid's Hamtaro Century. I personally remember the episode where Biju was dismembered by Boss Boss, Cappy, Maxwell. My ham hams, little hamsters, big giant sides. I'm right there with you, buddy. I filled up multiple therapy sessions just unloading after Zoid's Hamtaro Century. That episode in particular. I'm not okay. <laughs> it's okay. Because right now we're going to talk about something happening. We're going to talk about the greatest piece of art ever conceived of by humanity. Yes, the greatest anime of the greatest age, an anime starring Toru. Clayton. Yes, Max. Are you really trying to argue that Fruits Basket is the best fucking anime? No, I was up until 2 a.m. working on slides last night, so I put the wrong one in. Uh, sorry, it's, um, it's, it's, it's this one. Yes. <laughs> what the fuck? This, um, That's not even a Pokemon. <laughs> You're right, and you can find out why this Sunday at 3.30 p.m. at 5th Gen, not PKMN. We have a very deep lore. Indeed, very deep. Um, but actually, it's an anime starring Toru, the famous Japanese martial artist. Repeat viewers know what's coming. This is an anime so influential. It, in fact, kickstarted the entire academic discipline of archaeology and also invented the mere concept of an artifact, thereby giving D&D &D nerds the world over something to do while the DM was out getting pizza. It was also Ganondorf's breakout anime role, <laughs> where he's shown here depicted as a suave airship casino bartender and blackjack dealer. We're, of course, talking about Jackie Chan Adventures, everybody. Let's give it up for the story of famous Japanese martial artist Jackie Chan, who goes out on a globe-trotting journey to hunt down the missing artifacts, stop the forces of darkness, and makes some time at the very end to give good lessons to all the boys and girls. In fact, that is why tonight, for the very first time, and definitely not even once before, we are going to announce a revival of the Jackie Chan Adventures anime in official collaboration with Crunchyroll. <laughs> Donate to our Kickstarter. We swear it's real and not just a scam. And I know we're asking for a lot of money. $100 million for the trailer for the pilot episode. But hey, you can't put a price tag on quality. You can't put a price tag on art. We're going to hire J Tom Hanks to not only voice Jackie Chan, but we're going to hire him to draw the entire thing in crayon on used bar napkins. Because if art, artists are good at one type of art, they are necessarily good at them all. That's why we're hiring Chris Pratt to voice Jade, too, which I'm sure will not be controversial in any way. <laughs> and we're going to get started on this mega project right as soon as we stop getting these weird letters from Crunchyroll. Uh, they keep claiming we're falsely asserting a collaboration and using their name without permission. I really don't know what this is all about, um, but we'll, we'll get right on it just as soon as I can, you know, have some drinks with some Crunchyroll folks. If there are any Crunchyroll folks in the room, please buy him alcohol. Um, so you're probably... No alcohol at anime, by the way. <laughs> outside of the convention. So anyway, you're probably wondering, from these peaks, where, how did the anime get to where the fuck it is now? And we've been in the field 
For the past decade, the three of us have been doing deep embedded journalism within the anime community to find out exactly what the fuck has gone on. Except Clayton, he's just been watching JoJo's on a loop. Excuse you, I haven't just been watching JoJo's. I've also been watching modern, relevant anime like Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> but also, Dragon Ball Z is a good place to start. I figure most of you are familiar with Dragon Ball Z. It is, of course, the story of Ultra Instinct Shaggy and the rest of the Z Warriors. Um, serving as Earth's last line of defense against malevolent forces seeking its destruction. This is widely known, but what probably isn't as widely known here is the fact that the Z in Dragon Ball Z comes from the symbols found on Frieza's tanks during the invasion of Ukraine. I mean, Namek. I definitely mean Namek right now. February 2022, the, Ru the Russia, I mean, Frieza force invaded. But, you know, despite that being as awful as war generally is, there have been some positive developments, such as when Piccolo uh, led the Namekian forces to victory at the Battle of Kharkiv, sending the Frieza force packing, and choosing to consolidate his wins by achieving the orange Piccolo transformation by fusing with the HIMARS mobile rocket artillery system and a massive pile of money from Daddy Joe Biden's bottomless wallet. <laughs> so Dragon Ball Z had a good legacy going for it. It was good, it was quality, we enjoyed it. But then we came to the modern era when it kind of tailed off. We had kind of the shonen genre trying to compete for who would fill that void. And then even Dragon Ball came back and tried to compete to fill that void. And really, none of them did a good job at it. They just kind of stagnated and did the same thing over and over again and they just got fat drinking beer in the backyard. There, there was no new new developments, there was no... Because Dragon Ball Z reinvented the genre. None of these did. But I will say, they did give us concurrent releases back in the day. It was great. One episode a week, it was you could schedule your week around it and be always open on Friday and nothing would ever interrupt that. You'd always get your new episode. Nowadays, you just don't get that. You get like a half a season of like 10 episodes, and then you gotta wait like six months to get the second half of the season. Um, or they make you wait 10 years to see the next half of the, se the next season. It's just, they just don't respect your time anymore. I don't even remember if I liked Devil as a part-timer at this point. <laughs> like, new episodes are out, like, was that show even fucking good? And then, when they do give us like a new season, I, I get confused. Like, I started watching the new season of Dr. Stone, and the first episode, this fucking guy's there. I don't know who the fuck this is, he wasn't in season two. Apparently, in between season two and season three, they had a whole very special episode, where they induced this weird, cringy guy who can pilot boats and also made them create an entire fucking economy that Senku created, which, I mean, fun times, but like, let me know. I don't want to have to set up a Google alert to know if a special episode's coming out and then find out if it's canon. Like, when I was a kid, this would just be a made-for-TV movie. And it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be plot. And sure, Trio might, Dragon Ball Z is peak, but like, at least I knew what I was getting into there. And sometimes, and then you get these episodes, and like, are they relevant? I don't even know. Like, you remember the very special episode of Clone High, where uh, Tom Green discussed his ADHD, and then my favorite shit made out. And I learned a lot about ADHD and my sexual preferences that day. But the next episode, Abe and Gandhi aren't a couple anymore, and it's been ruined. Just don't even know. Oh, okay. Sorry, it's still me. I can't see the screen. Um, and then we get other bullshit. So what do these three shows have in common? We have a good show, a show, and then my friend Blake assures me is good, which is why I don't trust his opinions on anything anymore. And then they were all looped into the reboot cinematic universe. None of you have seen this. Don't fucking lie to me. Jesus fucking Christ. Max in the trenches finding the hard-hitting, topically relevant modern anime you, you animals crave. At least crave. 10% of the audience <laughs> raised their hand, which is fucking wild. I think it's at least 20. Oh yeah. I'm not good at math, I only have a degree in it. Uh, so suddenly, 
We've got new Steins Gate, which just, you know, fucking ruins everything and just gives all the girls bigger tits to make up for it. We have the second Inuyasha, which, let's be honest, you all already forgot happened. And then we had Bleach, which single-handedly ruined Mal as a, uh, any of Mal's remaining journalistic integrity when that show got in the top fucking five. I mean, it might, I mean, Full Metal Alchemist is still number one with a score of 9.11. Oh, but the worst reboot is this one. Yeah, here it is. Anybody seen 100 Deeds Freddy McDowell? No. That's what I was expecting Freaky from Reboot. <laughs> so, 100 Deeds for Eddie McDowd is a show about some shit heel teenager who's turned into a dog. And he cannot... No. <laughs> they know what's happening. They know what's coming. No. <laughs> They're scared. And he cannot become human again until he does 100 good deeds. Buckle up. The show got canceled after 40 episodes, which means Eddie McDowd is still kicking around with 60 D deficit to become human again. And Japan went, oh, let's fucking reboot that. And I bring you 100 thirsts for Eddie McDowd. <laughs> A show where Eddie has just given up all pretense of becoming human again and just wants to fuck a woman. <laughs> and I gotta say, any show that features a dog, a woman, and a jar of peanut butter is not something anyone should be exposed to. God, I'm still fucking going. Okay, sports anime. I don't think we realized how many sections I ended up with in a row. <laughs> Did you ask for? <laughs> we just kept cutting. So, in the 90s, sports anime was pretty cool, primarily because it was based on real sports. Uh, we had Prince of Tennis, that was pretty awesome. Uh, I think this is why my dad played tennis. Uh, he plays pickleball now, because no one fucking plays tennis anymore. And over the 2000s, they decided, hey, we could just make more sports anime about other sports. You know, basketball, swimming, volleyball. But sometime in the late 2000s, they ran out of ideas, and we got fucking Saki which is about competitive Mahjong. I think, I'm really not sure. <laughs> if you read the manga, you'll realize it is not about Mahjong. No, absolutely not. So, now we do still get some good sports anime, but it's because they're not sports anime. Let's be honest, uh, Blue Lock is just a Sky High reboot. <laughs> No, it's a Sky High reboot. And then we have Birdie Wing, which is just the gay mafia that happens to be playing golf. But for every good show we get that is tangentially about sports, we get this bullshit. And I'm gonna be honest, like, we got Battle Butts, we got Battle Butts, Battle Butts, Battle Butts. <laughs> We have Fastest Finger First, which says it's about trivia, but with a name like that, we know it's not about trivia. Uh, World of Tanks, the anime. And then Competitive Poetry. Which, like, let's be honest, the only time I want to see poetry in anime is that one dude in Hunter x Hunter who can punch haikus. And beyond that, we're fucking good. And I think, I think we're, like, one show away from getting a fur trapping anime. God damn it, we already have a fur trapping anime. And of course, another terrible genre is, of course, the isekai. Um, they really didn't exist back in the day. They were few and far between, like dot .hack. But then the mid-aughts, late-aughts, teens, they just came out of the woodwork and every anime started being an isekai. And they all followed the same exact plot. There was no deviation. They all followed some otaku loser who couldn't get a girlfriend or do anything right. All of a sudden they get hit by a truck and they wake up and they are the best thing since sliced bread. They have some special power that makes them great and they have more skill points than I have at the end of a Fallout game. That's not okay. Um, and then the women can't keep their hands off of them. That, that's not how that works. They had a shitty personality before. They still have a shitty personality. Yeah, I think we have a whole panel about that in like an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, they named all of them Kirito. I mean, look at this. We got Kirito from, uh, uh, yeah, Sword Art. Kirito from Goblin Slayer. 
Kirito from that time, or yeah, the Kirito from the greatest Kirito is reborn as a typical Kirito, yeah. And of course, finally, that time I was reincarnated as a Kirito. But the one good thing this genre gave us was, of course, Truck Coon, because he is busy protecting our world from all of these losers by hitting them and sending them off to some fantasy world. Because if he didn't call the numbers, we would just have, this room would be full, and that wouldn't be good. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, the anime industry has uh, caught wind of him and started uh, monopolizing him. So they need to stop doing this right now. I, I think we've got, we veered a little off course. I think we want to stay on point, which is to talk about the importance of proper pacing in classic anime. And what better anime to use to talk about proper pacing than the original English Funimation dubbed Bruce Faulkner scored version of Dragon Ball Z, which I know gets a lot of grief for having like nine episodes for the villain to charge up before they fire their planet busting laser. Um, to the point, but to the point where you're not sure if they're actually charging a planet busting laser or whether they're building up a, a toilet cracking dump. But the thing is, you need the believability there. When Cell spends those nine episodes screaming at you through the television, you know he's trying. He's putting in his eight hours. He's clocking in and out. He's putting in overtime. So that when he releases that solar Kamehameha, your butt clenches a little bit because you're afraid. You don't get that when it's cut short like that. When it's just like, ah, and then like the whole solar system explodes, it's like, um, where's the buildup? I, I don't believe any of this is real. Look at it this way. If you look up what the Earth's gravitational binding energy it is, which is the amount of energy it would take to crack the planet apart into pieces and uh, throw it off into the wind, um, it's equal to about a week's worth of the sun's total energy output, which means if the sun takes a whole week to destroy the Earth and God created the Earth in six days, Cell can take at least six goddamn episodes <laughs> to destroy the solar system. Thank you very much. <laughs> so DBZ <laughs> with this because it made, gave you that feeling that things were worked towards and it really paced well. Other anime from the 2000s did not. Um, it, like, things were done over really quickly. Like, you had 63 episodes where they condensed stuff, and then everything else was just filler. Like, if they expanded on that, and they made those first 60 episodes into, like, 400, like Dragon Ball Z did, we would have been much more enjoyable, and maybe Bleach would still be around in a quality anime, but uh, we all know they didn't. And then... Let some more... Yeah, here's some more bullshit. Then we have Moe. Now... Moe's been a plague in anime for a long time, especially in the bomb of the early aughts, where we had this show about four girls talking about how to eat candy, this show about five girls starting a shitty band, and of course, The Simpsons. <laughs> and it's been 20 years, and what do we have now? We have these girls going on a hike talking about how to eat their favorite candy. These girls forming a slightly less shitty band. And The Simpsons. And no genre is safe. I mean, have you seen Made in Abyss? It's adorable. She's getting her arm cut off, and I'm like, wow, she's so cute right now. Or I don't know, this girl that's just a gas canister full of sentient organs. Peak. And then you get to, I don't know, like, Akiva Maid Wars, and like, hey, what if we did Moe Mafia? And they did, but it's all Moe and no Mafia. When does any Mafia stuff happen? Honestly, at this point, The Sopranos should just open a maid cafe. It'd be much more profitable. This kind of this kind of Moe influenced other genres as well. Of course, the whole bully genre, because it really set unrealistic expectations. No, a girl is not going to bully you. You're not going to enjoy this. They're not going to be into you. That fat kid is good with no hair is going to bully you. You're going to have a bad time and have to walk home with a wedgie. You're not going to be very happy. Just give up on your hopes and dreams. It's easier. <laughs> I love getting bullied. I don't. <laughs> Please don't bully me. Um, I mean. 
Because when you get bullied, then you get trauma. And in the 90s, tra like, trauma was a mainstay fabric of every character's childhood. Like, Arnold's parents who decided to abandon him, fuck off to Costa Rica, and take a nap with some kids. Or, like, other examples, like in Yu Hakusho, where his mom is physically present, but way too committed to that bottle of sake to even say his name. Or the more elaborate parental abandonment trauma, you know, Evangelion. <laughs> where this kid's hanging out, and his dad's like, hey, Shinji, I'm alive. And Shinji's like, that's cool, can we hang out? And his dad's like, I mean, no, but... But I, I made this clone of your mom for you to hang out with and I don't know, maybe have sex with. And, and also, we've got this giant fucking robot that has the soul of your mom in it, and we need you to pilot it, and when it feels pain, you feel pain, and it's entirely powered by your own angst and depression. And like, that's really deep compared to this bullshit. Like, I get it, Tanjiro, you walked into your mom in a pool of her own blood. Who of us hasn't fucking gone through that? <laughs> I think that might just be a you thing, Max. Oh. It's okay, buddy. It's gonna get better, because we're gonna this talk about This is the therapy session, right? We're gonna talk about other forms of trauma, uh, especially childhood trauma. And what better way to talk about childhood drama, uh, trauma than in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 1, Phantom Blood, which many of you may not be aware is actually the best part of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Think about it. Aside, it you, you got a woo for that. <laughs> I'm shocked I got even one, honestly. But they are correct. Because JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Phantom Blood is, of course, the story of just completely obnoxious goody two-shoes Jonathan Joestar and his sociopathic adopted brother Dio fighting over their father's inheritance. And it's, of course, widely known for its very well-timed and appropriate amounts of exposition. Its roster of well-loved characters, including Poco and Poco's sister, who doesn't actually have a name of her own. Her name is actually Poco's sister. But she did bitch slap Dio that one time, so that's pretty metal. But neither of those pay you add up to the whole story, which is mostly JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Phantom Blood is the best JoJo's part because it has the highest density of eye laser beams of any JoJo's part by far. And I'm not just saying that because it and part two are the only parts that have eye lasers in them, but that illustrates part of the problem, which is that in part three, Dio just completely fucking forgets that he has them. Yeah. Like, I get it. The knife scene is iconic. When Dio is out there flinging, flinging the knives at Jotaro and they're floating around in stopped time, suspended in front of him, and Jotaro's sitting there going, oh shit, there's getting more and more knives. I don't know how the hell I'm gonna deal with this. When time starts again, it's gonna be, it's gonna be close. It's a good scene. But you know what would have been like 28,000 times easier for Dio? <laughs> <laughs> but this kind of leads into the problem of anime is just too complicated nowadays. Like, why, why keep track of Dio's laser, hot laser eyes, when you can just keep track of very simple things? Like, back in the day, we had very simple anime, like those who hunt elves. Just some guys in their tank, they get sent back in time, and to find the magic spell to send themselves back to their own time, they have to go disrobe elves in the land to find the magic pieces of the magic spell tattooed on the elven women. Very, very simple. I follow this. I understand what's going on. Then we got things like Bochi and the Rock, which is all about like anxiety and music. It's like I don't have anxiety. I don't. I don't get this. Uh, it just, just doesn't work nowadays. Way to brag. <laughs> I mean, I might have anxiety. I'm just not going to talk about that. And I think this downhill trend is no more is no more apparent than in the show Bakuno, which I mean it isn't on air because it's the best anime ever, except for Jackie Chan Adventures and. Honestly, if Jackie Chan made an appearance, it would be the best anime. But the guy who made Bakuno, he followed it up a couple of years later with Durara, which also pretty good anime, like eight out of 10, top, top 10 anime. I don't know what's between it and Bakuno, maybe like what, or Jackie Chan Adventures fan fiction. That's an anime, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah, and DuckTales. But now, he fucking came back, he made another anime, I was so excited, and it was a fucking reverse isekai about some edgy boy 
who's a goddamn necromancer with some weird hair, his yandere vampire GF, and then a dude with drones. What the fuck happened? You were good at anime, and now you're making this shit. Speaking of artists whose work became worse over time, Steel Ball Run is the worst JoJo's part. <laughs> and the reason is because the reason is because it's not anime yet. It only exists as manga, and we all know that books belong in the fucking garbage. <laughs> and if you thought I had more of a point to this section, you fell for it, fool! Thundercross split attack! Oh, and then one thing that old anime did was the whole rivalry trends. Like, we see rivalries in every anime. Like, in some of the old ones, we have pink hair versus blue hair, black hair versus yellow hair, brown hair versus yellow hair. See, it was very simple to keep track of who was against who. And, but nowadays, they just keep reusing the same characters. We they don't even have hair! They just got Vin Diesel on the rock, and it's really hard to, to figure out who's who, because they just look like the same. Um, but also, another thing the old anime did better was to the robot designs. <laughs> I mean, because look, we got massive throbbing cocks, check. Uh, flame spoilers, check. Blue paint jobs, check. Great, love it. Nowadays, we got this weird anthropomorphic shit. Um, red? Who puts red on a robot that isn't in a flame? I mean, look at this. It's like they ruined the design when they redid this. It's, they, they just changed too much, really. It's, uh, it just breaks my heart seeing this. So overall, anime is just a disappointment. We, we don't know where it went wrong, but... Clayton has some ideas. So we've spent the past 20, 30 minutes or so talking about different aspects of how anime has gotten worse, but we haven't told you the root cause yet. The reason why anime is trash and unable to get better anytime soon. And that's because Crunchyroll, in collaboration with Big Geothermal, assassinated Harambe. <laughs> You see, the ancient prophecy stated that Harambe was supposed to one day stumble upon a Dragon Ball GT box set in his enclosure, binge the entire thing in a weekend, become the golden Uzuru, ascend to godhood, and usher in a new era of anime greatness. But Crunchyroll caught wind of this. They didn't want to give up the profit they were making hand over fist on Fujo Bay, gay sports anime, isekais, that slandered Truckun's good name. And they just wanted the gravy train to keep rolling. So they hired an assassin. The kid was a fucking plant. Harambe's dead now, and we're screwed. And normally, this is where I would have the call to action to tell you to boycott Crunchyroll and support their biggest competitor, Funimation, except, oh, wait, they've been listening. And not only have they assassinated Harambe, our, our last hope of great anime, they've also bought out their competition, so you literally have no option but to purchase a Crunchyroll subscription to see all the latest and greatest anime. And this is a travesty. This is awful. This is why I am calling on the Federal Trade Commission right now to undergo antitrust action against Crunchyroll and break it up for monopolistic behavior. I want them to spin off Funimation so we can get back the great Toonami era, the great Bruce Faulkner scored era, the great English dubbed era, and move away from all of this isekai garbage. And maybe if we do this, if we do this one little thing, maybe Harambe will come back. <laughs> maybe we'll have good anime again. Maybe you'll be able to stream Bacchano on it. But things will be better than they are now. I don't, I don't know. I like and that. that's what we fucking need. I don't know. I like that my DVD set of Bachner is worth like several hundred dollars. So, Who needs a 401k? Now, now that we understand how and why we got to this dirge and bet anime, how can we fix it? Well, first off, I think we need to look in ourselves and fix ourselves first. And first and foremost, that means take a shower. This is a physical con again. This isn't digital anymore. You need to be clean. I can smell people. This is day one and we can smell you. 
So take a shower, use soap and deodorant, please. Um, two, take your waifus, put them in the trash where they belong. They're dumpster bait and fodder, just throw them in there. Third, please, whatever this is, stop this, don't do this, ever. This is not okay. When I do it, it's fine because Donkey Kong Country is based, but none of this garbage. Yes, yeah, just specifically Sonic stuff, stop. stop. Um, so to try to iterate this for you, so anime is like this black hole. If, if we were outside of this event horizon, we could do that cool slingshot maneuver from all those science fiction movies. But unfortunately, we've already hit the event horizon. We're in the dumpster. There's no going back. It's bad now. And um, we hope you enjoy it. Anime is just going to be bad forever, and we're going to complain about it year after year. Um, and if you wonder where we got our content, um, just the internet. And we know we're right because we have the microphones and you don't. Therefore, everything we say is correct. Hey, look, it's me. <laughs> but thank you for coming to our panel. We, we appreciate yelling at all you guys for an hour. We're surprised this, this many people remained in the room this long. <laughs> Um, of course. No, normally someone pulls the fire alarm on us. <laughs> yeah. So, thank you for coming. We have quite a few more panels this weekend. Uh, we hope to see you at any or all of them. <laughs> you signed yourself up, buddy. I did. I explicitly submitted all of these fucking panels. Not all of them. I submitted to you. <laughs> and for some reason, Fanime gave them all to us. So, uh, you should come see our panels. So, since we have a couple minutes, if anybody has any questions about modern anime, or if their anime is still technically considered anime, 